Hi, I'm attorney Ben Schwartz. Today we're doing a video called five ways people screw up when they try to handle their own personal injury case. I try to be positive. I try to avoid being negative, but every once in a while, I just got to tell you what I think. And we have a lot of people that come to us for personal injury cases. A lot of them are car accident cases. And there are a lot of smart and very well educated people in the United States of America. But I have to tell you that no matter how smart you are and no matter how well educated you are, unless you are specifically educated and trained as an attorney handling personal injury cases, and the only way to get this training is on the job training, unless you know what we know, you're not going to effectively handle a personal injury case in the way that a quality personal injury lawyer would do it. And so we have a long uh, stream of clients who come to us over the years who have given it a good attempt, who've tried their best to handle their own personal injury case and come to us when the frustration level got too high, dealing with the insurance adjuster or the defense attorney got to be too difficult, or they just realized, God, I'm in way over my head. And so I want you to avoid this situation, but I want you to know why I want you to avoid the situation. And the reason is because when people try to handle their own case and then they go to an attorney, the attorney has to clean up the mess. And so I've been thinking about this. I've done, I've done it over and over and over, taking people's cases after they've tried to handle them themselves. And I can give you the five ways, the five top ways that people mess up their own personal injury cases. Number one, when you have been injured in an accident, you're in Delaware, your auto insurance, your personal injury protection or PIP pays your medical bills. If it runs out, typically your health insurance picks up where your PIP left off. And so if your health insurance has been paying medical bills due to injuries from your auto accident or injuries from a slip and fall or a dog bite, when you get a settlement, you probably have an obligation to pay back the health insurer. If it's Medicare or Medicaid, you have a statutory obligation to pay them back. If it's private health insurance, you probably have a contractual subrogation obligation, a contractual obligation that's written into the health insurance policy that says that you pay them back. If you don't pay them back, you may lose your health insurance coverage. And so what we find is that people try to handle their own case. They don't pay back the health insurer. They spend their settlement money and then they risk the situation where their health insurer doesn't want to be their health insurer any longer. And this is a major problem because they've got thousands and thousands of dollars of medical bills that need to be paid. So what you need is an attorney who handles personal injury cases and who is adept at uh, dealing with health insurers, that attorney will identify the lien, L-I-E-N, that has to be paid back to the health insurer, negotiate the lien to pay back less to put more money in your pocket. Uh, number two, people blow the statute of limitations. So in any personal injury case, you only have a short period of time to file a lawsuit. In addition to that law that gives you a short period of time to file the lawsuit, there may also be a law that requires notice. For example, I had a case not too long ago where a woman slipped and fell on real estate belonging to the city of Dover, Delaware. The city of Dover, Delaware has a notice provision in its town charter that says you have to provide written notice to the town within a shorter period of time. I believe it's one year. If you're handling your own case and you don't know about that requirement and you don't put the defendant on notice of the case, you may ruin the case. And so you don't want to handle your own case. You don't want to handle your own personal injury matter because not only will you risk blowing the statute of limitations, but there are notice provisions that need to be followed. and it's very difficult to know about these things unless you're experienced handling personal injury cases in your jurisdiction. Number three, you may file what you think is a complaint 
but it may not be a complaint. We're, I'm in Wilmington, Delaware, as I'm recording this video. In the state of Delaware, there are specific requirements for what must be in a complaint for the lawsuit complaint to qualify as a complaint. If you file a document with a court and you think it's an appropriate complaint, the statute of limitations runs and the defense attorney files a motion to dismiss because you haven't followed the specific minimum requirements for a negligence complaint in Delaware, it may be too late to do anything about it. You may have ruined your case. You may have tried to do the right thing and it might only be fair to let you proceed with the case, but fairness and the law don't necessarily mean the same thing. And so you can ruin your own case by filing what you think is what you think is a complaint, but what turns out not to be a complaint. Number four, you could miss or ruin your underinsured motorist claim. So here's the concept. You're in an auto accident. You bring a lawsuit or you bring a claim against the at-fault party. Their insurance company pays you everything available under that insurance policy. They pay you what's called a policy limit settlement. You could go to your own insurance company and get more. That is called an underinsured motorist claim. But to do that, if you have a Delaware underinsured motorist policy, you have to follow certain procedures. If you have a Maryland underinsured motorist policy, you have to follow different procedures and it has to be done before you settle with the at-fault driver's insurance company. And unless you're practicing automobile accident personal injury law, you're not really going to ever be able to get yourself familiar with the procedures so that you can be certain that you're taking the right steps to protect your UIM claim. We see people mess up their UIM claims all the time. We see people screw up their UIM claims all the time. If you've had an automobile accident with personal injury, uh, with personal injuries, uh, and you're dealing with the at-fault driver's insurance company, one of the things you need to know is that that may not be the only claim that you're eligible to bring. You may be able to bring additional insurance claims. You need to figure out what those additional insurance claims are. You need to get with an attorney who has experience in this practice area in your jurisdiction who can make sure that everything is done properly to set those claims up so that you don't waive them. Number five, people screw up their personal injury cases because as an individual who does not give opening statements, does not cross-examine witnesses for a living, does not give closing arguments for a living, does not put together jury instructions for a living, as a layperson, as a normal everyday person, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to try the case to a jury the way that a jury trial lawyer would try the case to a jury. The settlement value in part is based on how well you would do at trial. So if the insurance company for the at-fault driver, the insurance company for the at-fault landowner uh, knows that you're not going to be able to do well at trial because you're not an experienced trial lawyer, you are driving down the value of your claim. People come to me all the time and they try to handle their own cases and when they get to the end point of what they feel they can reasonably do, they come to us and they say to me, I just got to the end of the rope, I can't do it anymore, I need to hire you. And I say to them, well, why didn't you come to us right after the accident? Why did you try to handle it yourself? And they tell me, I don't wanna pay a third to an attorney, but they're missing the point. The third that you're going to pay to an attorney is gonna be less than what you're gonna net from the settlement that the attorney is able to get for you. In other words, when I handle a case and the client has tried to get a settlement themselves, typically I can get five times as much, 10 times as much, sometimes even more for my client in settlement of their claim. And when you figure that the difference is that wide, the third that they're paying me is more than made up for by the fact that I can get much, much more 
in the settlement than the client typically can. So those are five ways that I see my clients or people in general are messing up their personal injury cases. This is really not a practice area where you want to dabble, where you want to try and do it yourself. There are uh, practice areas where I think people can and quite frankly should try to do things themselves. If you have a small claim case in Delaware and you want to sue someone for $500 or $600, that's a perfect example of a case that I think you should try to do yourself because I think that people should educate themselves about the legal process. People should uh, get used to involving themselves in the legal process. When you know hand, how to handle small claims yourself, it gives you power as a consumer, and that's a good thing. But when it's a personal injury case, uh, personal injury case that might be worth tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or millions of dollars, that is absolutely not the type of thing that you should handle yourself. It absolutely is the type of thing where you need to get to a quality attorney who has a lot of experience handling personal injury claims in your jurisdiction. So there you have it. I'm attorney Ben Schwartz. Hope that you found this video to be informative and helpful. Hopefully you have not had an accident. Hopefully you've not been injured in an accident, but I wanna put this video out there so that if you come across it on the web, and you're looking around trying to figure out what to do if you can handle your own case, hopefully you find the video and you realize that this isn't something to tinker with. Go to an attorney, get quality representation. Thanks very much for watching. If you have questions for me that I can answer in video format, please send me an email. My email address is ben.schwartz at schwartzandschwartz.com.